Welcome back. In this next step, what we're going to do is explore how to uh, embellish our scene. And we're going to be focusing on, in this video, on characters. Uh, one thing that I'm going to state that's kind of um, obvious is I'm not going to talk about storyboarding and setting up uh, your, your sequence. Um, that's something that hopefully I get to eventually that we could use a uh, software maybe like Storyboard Pro to demonstrate how we could uh, set that up. Do it on paper. I've done that many years with my students and it works. Um, I could highlight that technique out at some point. But basically, uh, you're going to go, I'm going to show you some techniques on getting characters. Okay. And the platform that I've used over the years for the animation is called Mixamo. It actually was purchased by Adobe. I don't know how many years ago, at least five, six years ago. And, uh, it's still free and it works, uh, with a Google you can create an account, etc. I just use my school Google account. So let's go have a look at that. Uh, give me a second here. I'm just going to log out. So you, well, I logged in. Okay. And here you go. I'm in Mixamo. Um, so it's Mixamo.com. And this tool in itself, I'm going to talk about different workflows. The easiest workflow is to just use the characters that are already in here. So these characters are provided for free. And you can use any one of these. And, you know, as part of the story building process, you may want to have your students think about, all right, maybe I have like uh, this creepy alien. Um, let's see. I think it's an alien. She's kind of like a zombie like looking alien uh, who's uh, the, uh, the bad guy. Keep it simple. And maybe this is the good guy. Uh, in the, the video that I created for you guys, we're going to be using um, this uh, female ninja warrior, I guess. Oh, no, it's an archer. Okay, so let's go with that. And so that's the first step. You find your characters, and what you want to do is maybe as part of your process, you have the kids look at the characters first. In my class, I make them create characters in um, Maya. I'm not familiar that much with Blender, but I'm sure you can do it in Blender as well. Now, mind you, these are high poly characters, uh, but this is important to know in 3D uh, design, polys are kind of like pixels. So this is very high in pixels. So, you know, I've, I have some pretty old computers, eight year old computers, and I'm able to run this no problem. So, although I have a 3D accelerated card, which you need, okay? And uh, you can always message me if you are looking for uh, advice. We use a 10 year old card. It's not the greatest, but it's good enough to get us by. Now, really, uh, if you had some money, you would want to get something with ray tracing today because the, the technique in the building is not any more complex. You just click the button and you have kind of the higher res looking characters. It's kind of neat. So, so that's the first step is getting your characters in here. Um, I'm going to just show you one or two other workflows before I ta talk about the animations. So the animations are already built in here. So what I want to do is show you a couple workflows that I, I have used. Um, now, the one that I use is is using uh, Maya. So let me just, so I built the character in Maya and I, I exported as an FBX. I have some videos on this somewhere else, but you can always email me if you want to know how to export. You create your character, and I usually export them out as FBX out of Maya. The two main file types that you're looking for are OBJ or FBX. That's what I've worked with in the past, and I've always had no more or less no issues. I'll show you one little glitch in a second. But so this is a character. So to keep things extremely simple, you could just use these characters, and just you're focusing only on storytelling. Just go with that. So you don't have to make any characters. You're just focusing on the storytelling. But uh, for those teachers who would like to get a little more technical where the kids have a little more ownership of the characters, uh, one of the tools that I use that's extremely easy to use is Fuse. Now, it's supposed to be phased out, apparently. I don't know if that's true, but it's still uh, there, and it's free, and I think you don't even need to pay for it. Now, although our school board has access to Adobe, uh, so we all have it on our computers, so I created a robot, uh, excuse me, a zombie really quickly here. And one of the things that you have to be careful of is if you do have a, an Adobe account, 
don't click send to Mixamo because you actually have to download them to bring them. I don't know why it's like that. Well, and it, it gets kind of confusing because maybe my account here is set up with Adobe while this one's set up my school board. So that causes all kinds of confusion with the students. So what I found that works best is I create my character, I go file, and I go um, export model as OBJ. Okay. So, um, so here's a copy of a robot that one of my students created. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to bring that one in first. So I'm going to go back to Mixamo. And you'll see over on this side there's an upload character. So it accepts OBJs uh, and FBX. FBX works without issues to bring in your textures. So what are your textures? Well, basically all the coloring, uh, you know, like, in other words, what it looks like in the game. Well, if you bring in OBJs, you're going to show, I'll show you that you should use zips. Okay. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a second. So I'm just going to go get a uh, character from my student. And again, it takes them about two weeks to get to the point where they can make these. It's kind of their summative. So the character will come in. So as you can see, I need to flip it. So I'm going to print You want it in a T pose. So whatever you create in your software, make sure it's in, in a T pose. Now, Humanoid characters work in Mixamo. So what's the drawback in Mixamo? Well, if you if you are doing anything else than humanoid characters, it won't work. You'll have to learn to rig them. Uh, there's ways to rig in Maya. There's ways to actually rig in Unreal Engine as well, which maybe I'll explore a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, we're just going to keep it simple. So I click Next. And you basically add all the parts where they're supposed to go. Okay. And sometimes this doesn't work off the first time. And I just have the kids retry it. And sometimes it's happened occasionally that their model didn't work. So this is, and one thing that's kind of neat, you can kind of like uh, have reduced the amount of, uh, you're building the skeleton. So what you're doing is you're bringing in the rig and you're, you're bringing in, excuse me, you're bringing in the model and you're creating uh, the rig, which is what is going to be animated in the software. Okay. So I'm going to click next. This takes a couple of minutes. So I'll just pause it. So here it is. Okay. So what I've done now that I have my model is I went and selected an animation to keep things simple, especially when you're starting out, select an animation where the character barely moves. Okay. It's just going to be a little bit easier. And as you get a little more at comfortable with uh, using it then you can get a little fancier with uh, moving animations i'll give you an example this animation the character moves forward so if you're filming this there's a way to track it but for now let's just keep it simple so we're going to go with this one and so he looks defeated so that's good enough uh, one of the things you want to do with your students is plan out okay what are all the animations you're going to need to bring in now tip at the beginning with students, especially if you're just teaching them this technique, just tell them to use one or two, really one, okay? One animation. And, you know, to get all the camera work and all the post-processing stuff. Uh, and then what I usually do is I give them the option to go more in depth with their summative at the end of this, you know, their exam, if you like. And then they can kind of go deeper, okay? So now here's the defeated robot. What it's good, and what you're going to do now is you got the animation, you're going to download it. And you just keep this the way it is, FBX with skin, all that. No need to change it. And you download it. So now what it's going to do is it's going to download it called Defeated. So if you're using an, another character with a different look, you got to make sure you rename this. Okay, so I'm going to go to the folder and I'm going to write uh, Rename. Robo. Okay, so that's my robot. So I'll just do that. Uh, now that was that's assuming you're using more than one character. Now in our case, we're not doing that uh, for our thing, but it's good for you to know that because what it does is it's the FBX that you're using, no no longer the original model that you got. So I want to briefly go back to this character. So we downloaded the zombie uh, from. Uh, you need to know if you're using uh, an OBJ and you want to bring it into uh, Mixamo. One of the things that you have to do is you have to zip up the OBJ and the MTL and all the texture files. So as you can see, I took this character. I found the folder where, so created a character. 
folder. Uh, give me a second here. I want to be on the D drive. And so it created this folder. So I right click and make a, a zip folder. And what you upload here is the zip folder. Okay. So you see, if you upload just the OBJ, you won't have all the, uh, the UV maps. You'll just have the uh, gray color. So I upload the zip file. So, so here's the character. Uh, what we're going to do is pick the animations that you uh, kind of align with your story, which is a really important part of the process I didn't put in. Normally you would like, what is it you're creating? Maybe it's just one scene where the character is looking defeated, or maybe it's a scene where the character is dancing. The students love the dancing uh, characters. They're quite funny. And like I said earlier, uh, try to get one where he's not moving too much so he can stay in frame with the camera. I didn't mention this, but you can also change the quality of the animation, what's going on, uh, by playing around with these uh, features. And then once you're happy, you just basically download it. And so I have the second character. And I will go get, um, so I have this one. And again, I'm going to leave it as hip hop dancing. I could go and rename it. I'm going to actually go to the Mixamo characters, the ones that are already pre-built. And I, I did mention that this is definitely the simplest option. So I'm going to just click on the archer here, change her. And I'm going to go and get a different animation that I call thinking. Oops, there it is. And so that's the one I used. So I'm going to download that right now. It's a short animation. Maybe I, some of them are a little longer, but you can string them in uh, Unreal Engine. But that'll be a video that I'll show a little bit later on down the road. So there's my character. So the most important step for students, because this is an issue we have all the time, is that they get mixed up and um, they have their files are all lost and everything. So before moving on, I usually force the students to show me uh, where they're placing their stuff. So I'm going to download all my animations in one project. So let's just go to the D drive. I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a new folder. Call it uh, my story, uh, something like that. And I'll put everything in there. So as you can see, I placed all my animations and now I'm ready to bring them into Unreal Engine. So here we are in Unreal Engine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to call it uh, uh, characters. Um, and I'll open that. If you have several characters, you would probably create a folder for each one. I find that's easier. But OK, so now I'm going to right click. I'm going to import. Uh, the thinking character, which is my archer. Now, the only thing you need to change in here is probably this feature here, import animation. The default is usually exported time. Why do you need to change that? Because what this does is it brings in the animation layer to your project. So if, if you don't have it selected, you're going to be missing something you need. Okay. Uh, now all this other D now another thing that you should also remember is if you set something up this time it'll remember the setting that you changed it to uh, last time okay so I'll click import all I'll just turn that off it always pops up so here are some these are the physics assets this is your skeletal mesh which you built in Mixamo. These are materials, uh, normal maps, uh, diffuse maps. These were all created uh, either in Mixamo or, or if you did your robot in, in Maya, could have done it in there. Um, so the only one we really need is this one, okay? And if you're not sure, like one thing you can do is place the character so press F F is a zoom feature and um, now if you're not familiar with moving around in 3d the hot keys that you often would like to use are W E and R okay so this is your move tool okay, so this moves the character in the scene really important and sometimes uh, you might want to rotate it a little bit like this all right I'm going to rotate this one and R is scale. So this will make the character taller, wider, 
fatter, okay? Or if you want to move it proportionally, use the middle box. So you see how I have the middle box? So I'm going to make the character just a little bit bigger, all right? And the hotkey, so I always use the hotkeys, okay? So W, E, and R. The other key that you like, I like a lot is F. And I'm going to use the Alt and uh, left mouse key to place. And I can see my character is floating, so I'll go W key again. And I'm going to drop him all the way down to the ground. So there you go. I'm going to press F again. And now we didn't actually create a collision or material down here. So if you were going to use this for a game, you'd have to tweak it. But uh, since we're not focusing on that, I'm not even going to worry about it. So here it is. And, you know, you may want to make sure that, like I said, it doesn't go through. And press F. You can zoom in and see. It looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. And I want to see if she's animated. So what I have to do is press play. So one of the things I made a mistake when I set up a third person character uh, game mode, uh, the character kind of pops in. So what you want to do is go back to your tree in the content under third person BP under blueprints. We're going to delete the game mode. Okay. So that it doesn't actually I could talk about what game modes are. They're just, just delete it. Okay. It's just simpler. And, and now when I press play, I'm going to just see my character doing her animation. Okay. So that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of set dressing, bring in some effects and begin setting up our cameras. Okay. If you have any questions, please let me know.